Hello, my name is Jim Oliver. I'm going to show you how to install and solder the mock power system that I have purchased from Craft and Theory. There's been some ambiguity from the diagrams that you see and how to combine the calibration values to put this in. Not, not that it's entirely difficult, but I've managed to have a little difficulty with it. So what we're going to do is these two sensor hubs will go into your power leads of your battery, which will be soldered onto this power distribution board. Two um, um, sensor arrays will go into the sensor hub. The sensor hub will then be sent to the uh, BEC, and there are two power outlets here that uh, go into the two power inputs for the PIXOC 2. We'll show you how it all works and uh, get rid of any problems that you may have. So let's get started. When you get your sensor, your, your PL sensors for the battery, you'll find in the back that there are uh, voltage numbers here, voltage and current amperage numbers that need to be input into Mission Planner. And so these little pieces of paper, don't lose them. They will be explained later. Okay, first off, you want to um, get some wire that is similar in length, although the lengths may depend on the size of your build and what you're building. I'm building a 1200 millimeter hexacopter with a fairly large plate, so I'm going to use exactly what they've given me, and your first order of business is to cut your negative lines um, to the same size as what they give you in the mock kit. This is 8 gauge silicone wire, very easy to work with, pliable, and I will be soldering them to XT90 plugs. So just a good first start. Now I have cut around an inch off and it looks like a lot, but you're really going to want to uh, get this on there and uh, make sure you have a good really get this on there. So don't be shy about exposing some wire on this. If you're new to this, don't get a Radio Shack soldering iron. You want to get a quality soldering like a Weller. I have a Weller WES51 and it's a hundred bucks or something but it's well worth it. If you're going to be doing a lot of this that I do you, you want to uh, put a little investment into it so just a little pro tip there. I've got uh, your basic Ace Hardware fine electrical rosin core solder. Also has a uh, flux core which helps uh, your soldering make a nice alloy bond and over time prevents corrosion so most fine electrical uh, solders are like this and recommended for this type of work. So what I'm going to do is just apply a large base of solder onto here. Be liberal with it and get yourself a nice big dab of it. Ouch. And then we just keep it nice and heated. And then you'll see right there that it's kind of formed this. It's gone to the edges and now it forms this nice little, nice little bed. After you're done with uh, that process for both of them, just flip it over, get to your negative side, and take the uh, pre-cut ground lead you have and make sure you line them up with the uh, these two here that are whatever you've done to the other side. Although it wouldn't matter, we're doing this so the, the uh, XT60 leads over here will not be cockeyed, so just repeat the process. All right, now that we've got uh, some XT90s on there, where our batteries go, obviously, we have the sensor hub, which comes with two four-pin plugs and one three-pin plug. And this is uh, for either a light or alarm or both. So what happens is if you have 20% sag in your batteries, you will get a blinking light. and if you get more than what I believe is 40% sag, I could be wrong, you'll get a solid light. And if you had a buzzer on there, you'd get a buzz. 
if you look at the unit this way, you have two fours and one three plug, and this is where that would go off to a buzzer light or some combination thereof. And uh, that's what that's for, if uh, I ever used it, which I don't. But I was hoping to tie that into the Pixhawk system somehow, but I haven't figured that out. When you're looking at this, you have the two fours and the three here. This is where the two sensor hubs go in. The two sensor, the two sensors go into the sensor hub. And I would do it like so. And then planning my build, my plate's about yay big, so I can ask myself. Where am I soldering next? So this can, we have arms going here. Let's say, you know, we have two arms going here and two arms going here, two here. So these, in a tight build, you're trying to find spaces for things. So, and I usually cover this with some sort of non-electrical, I 3D print a little piece, but you could use a piece of cardboard or something, but it'd be good to isolate this piece from carbon fiber or other uh, conducting materials. Now we open the Mach PL battery el elimination circuit, BEC. This steps down voltage to the Pixhawk to 5.5, I believe, volts, and it will have to be soldered on at some point. But when you buy the kit, remember that if you're looking at a power line of this, uh, configuration with only four. This is just power and it will not register any of the calculations, any of the voltage readings, amperage readings from the sensor hub or the sensors. So make sure to order the proper power cord. It has a special end and when you buy your Pixhawk 2 this end does not come with it. It will not fit into the Mach BC so you have to buy it special. And these are little things you have to look out for so this little sensor pin goes into the four pin sensor area here and then it goes into one of these two uh, inputs. Okay, kind of chose another spot for the BEC, somewhere I can get this in between some legs, but kind of turned in because of your build is here, you may have some holes or something that you need to get up and through into your pick socks, so you want to be having your power inputs, outputs, whatever you call them, close to the uh, build plate or where this may sit. Basically it's going to sit this way. So I need to get it somewhere around here where I can come up through a hole and into here. So, something to think about. But the main power with the sensor wires, the six wires, I would put that into power one, and then uh, thusly into power one here. And then take power two, redundant power. And it's up to you if you'd like to come off another BC and triple redundant your uh, somewhere off of here for more backup power. That's up to you. This seems to do the job. And then go into power two. So you know you're good and ready. So that's how it looks. Exploded view, I guess you'd call it. That's how you're going in. Sensors, sensor hub into the, what would be the top, I believe, with your two sensors out the bottom with this lead into what says sensor here, power one and power two, and then off to your pick sock. That's how you do it. Okay, we've got a uh, 10,000 milliamp battery here. Success, and we're going to uh, just give her a test now. Make sure you plug it in right. I've seen guys do it the other way around. 
Usually there's a buzzer here, but you can see that we have power to the pick sock. The sensor hub is sensing, or that's the BEC. You can see the sensor hub is working. And these sensors themselves have little blue lights in there. So you know you've got everything wired up right to this point, which should be no problem. But it's better to do it outside and make sure you've done it right before you put it all together. It's no fun pulling it all apart, so success there. All right, you've made it this far. Inside of the little plastic boxes, you get your PL sensors come each with a piece of paper that have the serial number of each unit, which they keep on file for you in case if you lose these. And then you have a voltage divider and amps over volts. Um, when you go into the battery monitor inside of Mission Planner setting up Argicopter, these two numbers are added together and then averaged. Add them up, divide them by two, that number is what you put in, and I'll put it up on the screen in a bit. And then these two amps over volts are added together if you have a dual power system. So you'll see they look something like that, and Craft and Theory has an explanation, but it seems highly unlikely to have 125 amps over volts, but it works. And uh, I will put that up on the screen now. Okay, we're inside Mission Planner, and just like their diagram, we'll start from the top. You go to Initial Setup, then over to the left, Optional Hardware, and down to Battery Monitor. Over to the right is Voltage and Current under Monitor. You want to put that there, and to the right of that, you want to put in your battery's milliamp hours. Below that says Sensor. You want to put in Other, APM Version. It says Pixhawk, but now it says Pixhawk or Cube, so make sure to pick that. Then when you go down into Calibration, the white box, number three is where you put the voltage. The voltage divider, that was the two numbers that you added together, divided by two to get an average. You put that there. And then at the bottom, number six, amps per volt, that's where you add up the two numbers and put that in there. Okay, one more thing. Go over to mandatory hardware, down to failsafe setting, and all the way to the right. Under your battery setting, under low battery, put your low battery voltage and your reserve MAH in there to give yourself plenty of power to get home to return to launch. If you're using Craft and Theory's flight deck, you will get an audible low battery and critical battery messages, which is uh, great to have. Using the mock power system with the Pixhawk combined with Craft and Theory's flight deck, you get this display here on a Tyrannus Plus radio, which gives you tons of information. This heads-up display is really great. Tons of battery information, all kinds of audible warnings. It's really a comprehensive system that I recommend. So anyway, thanks for hanging in there. I know it was a long video, so good luck. Mm -hmm.